Mitch Rant, so we just talked about Tony Baselli finally being uh, inducted to in August in Canton in the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame. Lauren Brooks is here with 1010 XL Helmets and Heels, and of course, every single weekday afternoon with Frank Frangie. And we, we, we're going to skate over that just because we just talked about sure. that. Let's talk about our new coach, Doug Peterson, okay. of the Jags. You in mentioned the last him. Time, yeah, over a month ago. <laughs> When you the search that. first started, that was the person that you wanted right. and you thought was super qualified. And then over the last like 30 days or so, all these names were in yeah. and out. And I feel like it kind of lost stock, but here we are. Look it's the coach you. that you wanted. Right. <laughs> well, first of all, congratulations to Tony Vasselli. We won't yes. forget him, but <laughs> my goodness, he waited a long time and, and well deserved. We're so happy about um, that. And thanks to you both for having me. But look, Doug Peterson, there was only one coaching candidate who was sitting out there who had won a Super Bowl. In 2017, we all know the Jaguars, that was the year Jaguars made it to the AFC Championship. Miles Jack wasn't down. But <laughs> <laughs> so the Jaguars could have, in theory, played the Eagles in that Super Bowl. A lot of people think the Jaguars would have won, but that's neither here nor there. Doug Peterson was the coach that led the Eagles to beat the Patriots in 2017, won the Super Bowl, and then in Philadelphia, there was a bit of a power struggle between the owner, the GM, and Doug Peterson. They wanted Doug Peterson to fire some of his coaches. He stood by them. He was too loyal, well, as far as in the mind of the Philadelphia folks. And so they said, you know what, let's part ways. So it was, it, it's not that he was fired, it was a parting of ways. Well, the good news is Doug Peterson wasn't wanted in Philadelphia. He took the year off and spent time with family, had a lot of family stuff happen, and now he's the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I don't care how long the coaching search took, although it was very stressful for those of us trying to cover it, uh, but <laughs> it's over now. We got the guy, and it'll be interesting to see now what happens as far as the front office. Shad Khan on Saturday said that they are looking into hiring an executive vice president. How, how does that change everything, and who are the Jaguars going to take with the number one overall pick? And let me ask you this. What do you think will be the identity that he will instill? Like, it, just from, like, his past and what he did like with the Tom Eagles. Tom Coughlin, or is it going to be like a Marone, or is it going to be like a... So I think Doug Peterson is, is a guy who is very focused on creating a really winning culture, but also the quarterback. That's going to be the identity of this football team. The reason he hired the coaches that he's hired so far, that's because they are all former quarterbacks. He is going to have Trevor Lawrence in a room with everybody who's played the position before. So the identity of the team is Trevor Lawrence, is number 16. And how far he can take this team, that we shall see. Well, let's see if he can take it as far as this next subject we have for you, which is, of course, the Super Bowl. That's right. So what are your thoughts? So obviously, as a Jaguars fan, I'm anti-Rams and Jalen Ramsey. <laughs> Same. <laughs> but overall, I do think Joe Burrow is the better quarterback than Matthew Stafford. Joe Burrow has this ability, and hopefully Trevor Lawrence will get there too once he has a little bit better of an offensive line. Although, if you ask Joe, I don't know how good his offensive right, line is. Right. But Joe Burrow has this ability to diagnose the defense pre-snap. Well, that makes everything else happen so smoothly because the receive, he knows exactly where he wants to go with the ball to his receivers or his tight end. And so overall, I think the Bengals will win. I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be an exciting game. And hopefully Matthew Stafford throws two picks. <laughs> okay. And let me ask you this too. Going back to the Jags, the Bengals in a very short amount of time mm -hmm. flipped their entire program, mm -hmm. right? And they did it really with the quarterback, mm -hmm. big part of the success. So now you look at the Jags, right? You got the quarterback that you want, you got a new coach. Is it possible two to three years now to follow a similar blueprint and have things happen that fast? I think absolutely, because the Jaguars defense has a pretty good foundation. It's the offense that really needs weapons. Well, you know how you get weapons? You get a head coach who's been super successful in this league that players from other teams want to play for. You have a lot of money. They have the most cap space. And so you throw money at some free agents. You draft well. That's huge. But get Trevor Lawrence weapons. Yeah. I think the running backs are pretty good between Etienne and James Robinson once Travis Etienne comes back from the injury. And then it's the receivers and the tight ends that are severely lacking. So that's what the, the Bengals have done. They put some resources into their defense, but for the most part, it's their offense. And that's why we've seen Jamar Chase be one of the best players in all of the NFL. So does Trevor Lawrence have a guy anywhere near him? No. So we need to wrap up, unfortunately, but we want to end this with one more shout out to Tony Baselli because I know you're going to Canton That's in right. August. That's right. Um, I will not be inducted into anything. <laughs> no, but you won't either to cover it. That's right. And we're excited for him. We love him and we love you, Lauren. So come back and see us. Of course. Plenty, even during the off season, of course. There's always something happening. And we're going to be right back with more River City Live.